memory quilts made from clothing. Let me show you the supplies you'll need. What you're going to need first is stabilizer. I use Helon Shape Flex 101. It's very lightweight, it's woven, and it's not a heavy glue. You don't want to use a heavy stabilizer. And we'll talk about stabilizer on shirts when we get into it. My go-to ruler for this is a 12 and a half inch square grid and a six and a half inch square grid, which is exactly, well, a quarter of the 12 and a half inch, right? You're going to need a regular pair of shears, not the little snippers that we sew with because you're going to be doing a lot of cutting. I use a marker. My marker is chalk. So I have a chalk thing, but you can also use just a regular pen because it's going to be cut off and won't show. And then most important, you're gonna need a good pressing cloth. And this is one of my favorite pressing cloths to use, Handy Wipes by the Clorox Company. And if you take a look there, I remember them from when I was a kid. They're see-through and it makes the best pressing cloth. Oh, you know what you're also going to need? T-shirts. Let's talk about the stabilizer. I've had quilts come to my shop before and they are so stiff, it's like a board, and the quilting doesn't look really great on them. Not every shirt in a t-shirt quilt needs stabilizer. Let me show you these quilts here. This is one that I made for the sister of Holly Bruno, who was in my video last week, and I made this out of Holly's clothes. They just sent me bags of clothes that the two sisters and the mom had each picked out. I ended up making three quilts. For now, we're just gonna look at this one. If you take a look at the top and the bottom of the quilt, there's those long rectangle parts. Those are leggings. Guess what leggings are? Super, super stretchy, lightweight knit. Definitely, I had to use the stabilizer on those. Take a look in the top left corner. There's kind of a three colored shirt and it's a sweatshirt. I don't use stabilizers on sweatshirt. Just no need to. And also, if, if it's a real beefy tee, sometimes the tees are just beefy. You know what I'm talking about. I don't use stabilizer on those either. But then still, while we're looking at this quilt, if you look at the top aqua square, that was a pair of fleece jammies. It was amazing the different pieces of clothing that I got to make these memory quilts so they could remember their little sister. I wasn't about to turn any of the clothes down, but the difference was the stabilizer or not using the stabilizer. So I hope that helps you figure it out. Let me show you one more quilt. We'll call this the Dressy Quilt because obviously it was this girl's nickname. Take a look at the bright, bright yellow pieces. That was the lightest weight jersey ever. They were baseball shirts and it was a lighter weight jersey than the leggings were. I had to be so careful when applying heat with the stabilizer because these lightweight fabrics don't take to the heat very well. So you definitely use a pressing cloth on those. Another time you use a pressing cloth when you're doing a t-shirt is almost every screen printed t-shirt that has a name or a number or something on because it's like a rubber paint. And if you don't use a pressing cloth, you're going to end up smearing and melting that. I hope that helps you figure out what type of interfacing you wanna put down. Your ultimate goal should be that the entire quilt is soft and flowy and cuddly because this is a memory quilt about someone special. Let's talk about cutting right now. I'm gonna start out by showing you this really ugly shirt. It's my painter shirt. I've had it for probably 25 years, so it's time to cut it up. But on the back is a big design that I may want to include. And this is what I would do. I would take my 12 inch square and I would lay it over and decide about where I would like it to go. Now this shirt is kind of stretched out of shape. I even up any words 
any words or graphics, I even them up. So I look here and there's about two and a half inches below and there's about two inches above. So we could just slide it up a little bit like that. There's an inch on this side and not quite there. I have that centered. And what I'm going to do is outline it with chalk just like this. My, run my chalk line and I'm just gonna cut that right out. And I'm not going to cut the front of the shirt. But notice, here's the chalk line and I'm cutting well beyond the chalk line. There's my piece that I'm gonna put into the quilt. Not really though. I don't want this ugly shirt in a quilt. Now look at this on the front. There's another logo. This is where I use my six and a half inch square. And I'll show you how I line these pieces up because I use these little front pieces on the shirts. They actually make my quilt longer. So since I've already cut that one out, I'm just going to cut this out to be quick. Here is my six inch square. I wanna talk about cutting a few other shirts as well. This is a jersey shirt. And really, there's only two places on here that you could get a square because there's nothing on the back. So it's like a jersey polo shirt. By the way, I'm not big on cutting plackets and buttons into these quilts, but people do. It's your quilt, you can do whatever you want. But look at that, I could get a nice six inch square there. And another place, check what's on this sleeve here. You could cut this sleeve and open it up and there is another six inch square. And if you put two six inch square, six and a half inch squares together, oh, you have a 12 and a half inch square. So this shirt would definitely need interfacing. It's very lightweight. A lot of people have asked me about cutting up a man's dress shirt or another shirt like this. And I just want to show you all the pieces that you can get from this shirt. You can obviously get maybe one, if it's long enough, I could get two 12 inch squares out of the back piece. Pretty cool. And then on the side, I could get a 12 inch square. And you know, it might have the side seam in it, but I think a side seam is kind of cool, so I would do that. And then on this side, I could get another 12 and a half inch square. Here's something a lot of people don't think of, and I'm gonna cut this sleeve right off. And I'll open it up. If the shirt's big enough, you can get another 12 inch square because I've never done this, but I do have a friend who, uh-huh, there's another 12 inch square. So from a man's shirt, you can get eight 12 inch squares. And there's some really cool prints and designs that you could have in a quilt. And these, if they're like cotton like this one is, I would absolutely not interface them. You want this quilt to be soft. And this would be just like working on regular quilting fabric. Let's go over to the ironing table and I'm gonna show you how I apply stabilizer and how I cut the finished block. Okay, here I am at the pressing table where a lot of work is done. And I have my t-shirt square cut out. You can see the chalk line around it. And the chalk line is kind of the edge of the square, but I'm going to just lay, this is glue side up and I'm going to put this right on here. Move it over where it shows better. There's a lot of uh, designs on here that are screen printed. So down goes my pressing cloth and I'm going to press this on so it's really secure and on there good. with my perfect little handy wipe. One of my quilting buddies taught me that this was the best pressing cloth. Can you see how nice that's looking already? 
what I'm going to do is cut it out still larger than what it is, but to the edge of the fabric. And then we're going to take it over to the table and square up this block and then give it a final press. Okay, I'm back at the cutting mat and I have my block laid down. Again, I'm going to cut, use my 12 and a half inch square, line it up with my chalk, but I'm also going to do the best I can to make sure I have this design centered because I want this to look good. The next thing is just to cut. Look at that. It's nice, still soft, but stable on the back so it can be sewn into a shirt. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but it really didn't stick very well. So I'm gonna take it back to this, the ironing table and we're gonna really press this down. I am gonna give this a really good press. Now, just as an FYI, when you're making these quilts, sometimes the bond between the stabilizer and the shirt doesn't hold. I don't worry about it too much, but it's still going to stay and you can catch it up in the seams. And then again, I want to press this on the right side or the front side, and I will always definitely use my pressing cloth. Okay. This block is ready to put into a t-shirt. It's pressed together pretty good, and I'll just stack it and go on to make my next block. I make my six and a half inch blocks the same way. Let me show you about layout. Well, you didn't think it was gonna be that easy, did you? But you know where the real work with a t-shirt quill comes in? It's in the layout. And I have had customers and friends just pull their hair out with the layout. You just kind of have to go with what you have. Why do I use the 12 and a half and six and a half inch squares? This quilt will tell you why. This quilt was made for someone from their college t-shirts. And if you take a look, you'll see that on the like second row in, there's a row of six inch squares coming down. And then I got the idea for this. Well, I, I'd had the idea before, but when I saw that big Idaho that's running horizontal, I thought, oh, definitely we'll cut it out. So that's 12 inches wide, six and a half inches tall. And then I'll put six and a half inch squares. And so on both sides of it and how we made this one was we were able to widen and lengthen the quilt. So the quilt had a good shape to it. So that is how I use those six and a half inch squares. And you know what? It doesn't matter if several of them in this quilt are the same, but I just space them out separately. Let's take a look at the layout on these quilts. These are the Bruno families and little Holly Bruno, who I told you about, who passed away from Rhabdomysocarma. Oh, I said it wrong, I know, I'm sure. But anyway, I made these quilts for her two sisters and her mom out of her clothing. Now, the layout on them is different. I do have sashing, so you can use sashing or you can not use sashing. It really depends on how much work you wanted to put into it and the ease. If you're gonna use sashing, use a good quality quilting fabric. I've quilted quilts with really lightweight sashing and it's it's just a tad tricky. Take a look at the one I did a shadow box around the quilt on the left. That was Mama Bruno's. The other quilts, I chose a little easier layout. I did the 12 inch blocks with the same sashing and then they have the strips of the horizontal blocks on top, the six and a half inch tall horizontal blocks and those were made again from her leggings. So that's how I did that. This last quilt that I want to show you was different because all I was given was one t-shirt. On this last quilt that I wanna show you, it's not really as much a clothing quilt because it's all fabric but one shirt, and this is the shirt right here. It says Scan Scanlon Strong, and this was, this was Matthew Scanlon's shirt. So I was given one shirt and I wanted to tie it together. And what I did was found some colors in the shirt, uh, pulled a bunch of fabrics in for a design, and then I made appliques using the shirt as a design. So there's that one shirt in the top of the quilt here, and then take a look. I have the beanie hat, the glasses, and the beard separate 
space throughout the quilt. That was actually a really fun one to do. And I appliqued those on. This quilt meant so much to me to give to them. Last quilt was for Matthew who died from lymphoma just right after he graduated from high school. It was such a tragedy. However, I was able to get this finished and Matthew was able to use it several months before he passed away. And then his father hangs it on the wall of his bedroom and it's a big comfort to him. Thank you for watching. If you like what you're seeing on my videos, I would love a thumbs up and a subscribe. And I'll see you next week.